Mark, you rolling? Yes, I am. That is the biggest spiny lizard we have seen this entire trip. One of the biggest I've seen in my life. It is huge. This is gonna be a tough catch. What's going on, Coyote Pack? We are back in the Sonoran Desert. And as you can see, it is nighttime, which means it's the perfect time to search for desert creatures. Now, I do have my trusty flashlight with me, and my snake tongs, and of course, Mark right there behind the main camera. What's going on, guys? We've got Mario on the B camera. There he is. And if you guys are ready, we know what happens next. We head off into the darkness and see what we can find. Let's go. All right, Katie, so what are we looking for? Where are we, where are we starting tonight? Well, what's interesting and that people don't realize, whoa, I just heard something. Hold on a second. What was that? Ooh, what is that? What is it? I thought it was a rattlesnake. It just went tss, tss, tss. I think it was a bug though. What I like about this area is you have a lot of plant life, but there's also all this area to walk in between things. But notice there aren't many cacti around. Which is nice. It's really nice. So we're not walking into things. You look at this, it looks like we're on a trail, but we're not. The entire desert in this area, no matter what direction you place your lights, you can go this way, you can go this way, you can go that way. It's actually almost disorienting because it's very easy to get lost. Now, we do have a GPS tracking system with us. We've made a pin way back at our vehicle, which we start off at at daytime. Hopefully, we'll make it back there, but I think we go this direction and see what we can find. We're just going to move slowly and continue scanning the branches. And oftentimes, what you'll find is in just like a nook like this, a lizard laying and sleeping on the branch. Now, we've used the same method to catch things like iguanas and nitinol. So if you guys remember the nitinol episode, we were able to spot the lizard up in the tree and then safely catch it, hoping to use that same tactic tonight for some of the lizard species out here in the Sonoran Desert. All right, let's cover some ground and uh, keep searching. Oh, right here, look, look, look. What do you got? Oh, look at Baby that. Baby Western Diamondback. Nice. Wow. I'm gonna cut my light, can you see it okay? Yeah, sure. Look at that, that's a tiny one. Wow, that's, that's one of the one. smallest rattlesnakes I've ever seen. Beautiful though. Look at you. Now don't let its small size fool you. This rattlesnake can be just as dangerous as a large one. Ooh, look at that little rattle going. Whoa, okay buddy, there you go, strike position. I'm trying to get it away from these bushes so you guys can see it a little bit better. Look at how quick that is. All right, how's that? Can you guys see it right there? Oh yeah. Wow, you're one of the smallest old rattlesnakes I've ever seen. Look at that, just two buttons on that rattle. Look at the but, banding on the tail oh, too. Oh, it's gorgeous. It looks like it maybe just shed. Look how vibrant that coloration is on the tail and on the patterning of its back. Look at that perfect defense pose right there. Now the venomous bite that this snake can pack, even at this size, would send you to the hospital. So it's not a snake I'm gonna try to handle, I'm just gonna admire it from a safe distance, if you can call this safe. Now these snakes don't necessarily want to strike, right? Notice that. And its tongue's flicking out, feeling the edge of my snake tongs. They want to keep that venom as a reserve, and snakes only bite as a last resort. So right now, this little rattlesnake is thinking, as long as I stay camouflaged and I don't move, perhaps these potential large predators will just keep moving in that direction, and I'll be able to slither off and continue hunting for the night. All right, guys, well, this was a pretty cool find. But let's head this direction and see if we can find some of those sleeping lizards. Oh, look at this, it's a fallen cactus. Whoa, that wow. is a huge. That's a fallen giant right there. Whoa. It's still alive a little bit, it looks like. I bet this came down in a recent monsoon. I've never even seen. Oh yeah, look at this. This just definitely recently fell. Wow. Look at the inside here. Look at that, it's like wood. Too, too bad. That's, a, that's an old cactus. Yeah, that's, a, that's an old legend that fell right there. Wow, definitely probably came down in some heavy monsoon winds. Oops. Yeah, we can get up and over this. Okay. Want to hammer your camera? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Woo! 
Ooh, standing on top of an ancient cacti. That's a new one. So I watched the spikes on the edge there. Yeah, see it. Didn't jump. Ray, what's the dick? Six, six, six. Okay. Nice, Ray. I got it, I got it, I got it. it. Took me a second to properly identify it, and that's going to be the key piece to talking about this species specifically. Because when we walked up, we set the lights, and you'll notice the red and the black and the slight yellowish coloration. This could have been a coral snake, but it is not. This is a long nose snake. Wow, look how beautiful it is. Now that bright coloration is aposematic, which means it's a warning to any potential predator that I may be venomous. However, in this instance, it's a snake that is completely safe to handle. Now these snakes are strictly nocturnal. It's the only time you will come across them. And during the day, they're actually hiding underground, which means they are fossorial. But at night, they are out searching for any sort of little creature that they can get their mouths on. Could be a gecko, could be a little roach running around in the desert. This is an opportunistic predator. Now go ahead and zoom in on the nose there. You notice how pointed it is? The scales on the tip of the snake's nose are specialized to help it dig underground. They're excellent at burrowing in soft, sandy soil. Now that red and black actually does help it blend really well into this desert environment. Here, Mark, check this out. I'm gonna set it down in the sand. Sure does. Look at those variations in all the dark rocks and even the reddish colorations in the rocks help the snake stay perfectly hidden. Keep on, come back here. Gotcha. Very cool. Let's look at the underside of the snake real quick. Look at that. Very smooth. And there's actually an iridescence to its skin. Can you see that in the lights there? Oh yeah, that's awesome. It's like a, a satin white. Incredibly smooth too. Almost looks like it's slimy, but as we know, snakes have scales. They are not slimy at all. It is very, very smooth. As you can see, very, very friendly. Well, that was pretty cool. We've come across a rattlesnake tonight, which as we know is venomous, and long-nosed snake, which is non-venomous and completely safe to handle, as long as you properly identify it as being a long-nosed snake and not a coral snake. All right, I'm gonna set it back down into the sand. It's gonna take off into the desert. Later, buddy. So how do you spot these lizards, Kelly? It's a matter of looking for some sort of obscure shape out on one of the limbs of these creosote bushes or some of these other trees. They're actually really hard to spot. Wow. Mark, you rolling? Yes, I am. That is the biggest spiny lizard we have seen this entire trip. One of the biggest I've seen in my life it is huge. That is maximum size, that is a male. You can see the dark bluish coloration on its back. This is gonna be a tough catch. It's a fortress around it. Wow, you see you've got all these prickly pears right in front. I don't know how I'm gonna catch this lizard. It's a giant choya tree right next to it too. Okay, where are you at? Right here. Choya right here. He's awake. He's awake? Yep. Got it! Ah! Nice grab! Woo! Woo! That's the one! Wow! Nothing like getting on your back in a bunch of ah! Spikes and thorns! Whoa! Ah! I got spikes all into my shoulder. But it was worth it. There it is. That is a gorgeous male desert spiny lizard. Wow, that is a beaster right there. A perfect field guide specimen. Oh, trying to bite me. Ouch, and spiked me. And let's talk about why they call this the desert spiny lizard. Look at that beast. Wow. This is one of the larger specimens that I have ever seen. And look at all the spikes on the back of that reptile. Now, the way we know this is a male, aside from its size, is look. Oh, 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 oh. We just wanna show everybody your belly. Ow, so spiky. Look at the belly of that lizard. Wow, and there's a little bit of yellowing speckled in there. Oh, you are so handsome, so handsome. 
and incredibly strong. Now this is one of the most robust lizard species out here in the Sonoran Desert and one of the fastest lizard species you can come across. They're almost impossible to catch during the daylight hours. It's even been tough to catch them at night, but as you can see, we finally managed to get one in front of the cameras. Woo, we have been out here for, gosh, it's going on three hours at this point trying to catch this lizard, but we have finally got one. Now let's talk about why they call this the desert spiny lizard. This is probably easier to feel than it is to see, but there are sharp scales running all along the length of this reptile's body. And if I run my finger backwards like this, Mark, put your finger out there. Tell everybody what that feels like. Kind of run your finger gently backwards. Uh, yeah, it's like a cheese grater. Right? Oh yeah, that would shred you. Now imagine being something trying to eat this lizard. Let's say a snake. Tries to swallow this, it's gonna get stuck in its throat. So the only real predator for this creature out here is a bird, something like a roadrunner or a hawk. Snakes? usually tend to avoid the desert spiny lizard. Oh, and this is absolutely one of my favorites. And as a kid, I would always try to catch these, but they were incredibly difficult to ever get close to. Now, you'll notice this sort of dark patch on the lizard's back. You see he's shedding some of his scales there. That dark patch actually becomes much more vibrant during the day. And what they will do is wake up early in the morning to bask in the warm, glowing sun. As they warm up, they get ready to head out and hunt. This is a diurnal species, which means it's active during the day. And as that sunlight warms them up, they actually get brighter in coloration. But you can see even here at night under these lights, the belly is absolutely beautiful. And you'll notice that bright blue coloration. You see the chin here? It's not as bright right now, but during breeding season, these lizards are absolutely gorgeous. And the males, what they will do is they'll go up on a rock, puff up their chest, and say to all the ladies with that bright coloration, aren't I handsome? Don't you want to date me? And I'll tell you what, buddy, you are about as handsome as it gets for a desert spiny lizard. Wow, these guys are just so cool. Now they are voracious predators, and they have a pretty powerful bite. Let's see. Show us how tough your bite is. No? I really want to show you. Ah! Wow, that's powerful right there. And that's about as powerful as the night anole and kind of getting close to the collared lizard. Can I have my finger back? Please? Ooh, yeah. Those little teeth. Ow, ow, ow. Go. I'm going to turn my finger like that, Mario, so you can get a tight shot. Can it break skin, you think? Uh, probably not, but the pressure is noticeable. And I'll tell you what, for any little insect or arachnid running around out here in the nighttime desert, those jaws would be the end of you. All right, can I have my finger back, please? Ah, ah, ah. Whoa. Oh, I saw the saliva coming off of it. Oy. That was a powerful little bite right there. You ever worry about getting bit by all these reptiles? No, not so much. I knew that this one wasn't gonna break skin, but give me a solid little pinch. Well, it took us quite a bit of time, but we finally managed to catch one handsome desert spiny lizard. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, let's place this lizard down here on the ground and see just how fast they really are. And he is super fast. He was that fast? Yeah. Then he took off on a bulb. Did you see him? <laughs> well, there he goes. You see how fast they are. All right, well, that's a wrap. If you thought catching a desert spiny lizard was exciting, make sure to go back and watch the episode where I caught another one of the Southwest speedy reptiles, the collared lizard. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail.